Welcome to the Revolution Church Podcast. Before we begin, we'd like to remind you that our ministry is supported 100% by listeners like you. To make your 100% tax-deductible donation today, please visit revolutionchurch.com slash donate. You can also learn more by clicking the donate section on the website. Hello and welcome to Revolution. Glad you are listening, as always. Um, last week we made the announcement, and I'll make it again, that we are getting ready to start having services, live services, that is, again, at Bryant Lake Bowl. So we are returning to the gutter, returning to the bowling alley, and uh, that's going to be starting April 2nd at 11 a.m., so it's a little bit earlier, but we're all grown-ups now, so I think we can handle it. So if you're in town or you know people in town, please uh, stop by or let them know about it. Or if you come by and visit, you'll know where we're at. We'll be in Bryant Lake Bowl once again. I'm really excited about returning to the bowling alley. Uh, went and met with them, and they seemed really excited about having us back, which was nice. And I'm really excited about the idea of community. We're meeting a little bit earlier so we can have more time to spend together with uh one another and yeah fellowship fellowship hour hour of power so that's right revolution church back at bryant lake bowl starting april 2nd at 11 a.m um today i am going to share with you a part of luke uh, usually a part of luke that we don't start with um but we're going to do ahead and do that anyway luke 15 29. But he answered his father, Listen, for all these years I have been working like a slave for you, and I have never disobeyed you commandments. Yet you have never given me even one young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came back who has devoured your property, With prostitutes, you killed the fatted calf for him. Then, fat, the, then the father said to him, Son, you're always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice, because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life, for he was lost and now has been found. And the reason I start here is because I think it's interesting to see what happens when we see people who get forgiveness that we don't feel deserve it or grace that don't feel deserve it or people are successful and we aren't. You know, these ideas of basically jealousy and envy. Um, Because who knows what we all really deserve, to be honest. But the idea here is, in the story of the prodigal son, when you get from the older brother's perspective, all we know is that you have an older brother who works very hard, feels very passionate about his work, and feels that his brother has betrayed not only him, but his father, and wasted their money on prostitutes. And he's astounded that there would be a celebration for him when he came back. So all we know here is that someone's come back who's wasted money of the family. and There's being a party thrown. That's what you're hearing from the older brother. That's the perspective you get. Matter of fact, he was in the process in the field out working when he got the news that his brother was back. So... It reminds me of a little bit of that Morrissey's song, We Hate It When Our Friends Become Successful. That line. Um, (laughs) Envy and jealousy is a gross little monster that we all have to deal with sometimes. And that can eat us apart. Sometimes it even be 
jealousy of our different times and of our lives we, we wish we had back or things like that. Um, but yeah, so you've got this, this, the son, the good son, and he's angry. He's disillusioned. He's, uh, He's having a hard time to learn how to celebrate because envy is showing its ugly head. But we have to remember often when we have these moments of anger, envy, with grace. I mean, that's what grace is about. Grace is, you know, something that's often undeserved. Grace is often accepting that which is unacceptable. And, uh, man, it's a tough lesson to learn. You know, it, 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 in, when envy and jealousy come in, it, it seems like it tries to steal the peace, you know, and it, and it pokes our wounds, you know, all the, uh, we don't add up or we don't feel this way or we don't never deserve this. And how come they're getting something that we deserve or that they don't deserve? You know, I mean, the son says, you know, I've worked so hard all these years and you've never done a party for me. You know, you've never celebrated me. You know, he's caught up in that comparing himself game, which is, uh, which really does steal one's peace, which really does, you know, keep you from having serenity in your own life when you're in that game. You know, in in a lot of these times, a lot of these stories, we don't know what happened. We only see the one side. Now in Luke, we know that the older brother, I mean, we know that the younger brother, the prodigal son, asked for his money, asked for his inheritance and left and wasted it all. And I mean, pretty much did what the brother said. Um but the father was waiting when he showed up and celebrated. Now, the reason we get a better idea of the prodigal son is because it's what God is like for us, with us. Is you know, you have the story of the lost sheep or the story of the lost coin. Um, let's look at the story of the lost coin. That's in Luke fifteen eight. Or what if a woman having ten silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? And when she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors and says, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. The repents a different, unique word, fully loaded. But when someone changes their mind, when someone realizes their brokenness, when someone turns, um, but she's rejoicing because this one coin was lost, you know, yes, there was 10. And then there's the story of the sheep, you know, and how the shepherd leaves the 99 sheep to find the one sheep and then celebrates when he finds the one sheep, you know, and then we get the story in a human sense. And it's funny because it's harder to take in this human sense. Now, for a lot of us who grew up in the church and you heard the story of the prodigal son, you think, oh, this is such a great story of restoration and that sourpuss, that brother, you know. But I want to look at us as the brother. Are we the unforgiving people? You know, we're all full of contradictions. You know, and in a way... Are we in that place? Grace for them, you know? Are we the envious? To seeing bad people forgiven, to seeing people restored, to seeing 
people successful? Does that bother you? Does that hurt you? Does it, you know, it's, and this isn't to say that you're a bad person. It's to say that these are emotions that we all feel and we all deal with. And um, as we've been going through Galatians, one of the things that it says in Galatians that keeps us from the fruits of the Spirit is jealousy. Also says envy. You know, that these are things that keep us from love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and generosity and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. You know, there's two things right there. Uh, uh, there's tons of other ones, but jealousy and envy. And I think that's two that we might not look at a lot and things that we might not think about a lot is how those affect our life and how that affected the brother's life, uh, the older brother's life, you know. His father's saying, everything I have is yours, which is a literal thing because he's saying, you know, your brother's already spent his inheritance. But maybe that's why the, the brother's so mad. He's saying, you know, this fatted calf should be mine. You know, wait until he sees that his brother also has a ring and a robe. He's going to lose it. Twice as bad. You know, but I think these are just emotions that aren't us. They don't represent us. And we need to learn to allow these things to move slowly past us. You know, um, like picturing envy or jealousy as something floating on a river. You know, something that we deal with. We notice it. We see it. But we continue to let it go by. You know, we can learn to recognize it. We can learn to sit with it, feel it, but not make a judgment out of it. Just see it and let it be. Now, when I say let it be, I don't mean we just sit there jealous and angry, but we just sit there and recognize what it is. And we go, okay, this is the feeling. This is not great. This isn't that. But we don't sit there and judge it. Because when we judge it, sometimes we cause it to fester even more. And we cause it to be like TNT and just this judgmentalness of our own jealousy and envy come together. And we self-pity and it makes this toxic mixture that it just explodes inside of us. So learning... To accept when others are forgiven. And learning to forgive others. Learning to be the father in the story. You know, your brother was lost and now he's found. He was blind and now he sees. You know, what are the steps that we must take to be that person? The person that's willing to forgive those who betrayed us, who've basically said, I wish you were dead. I don't want any part of you. I want what belongs to me, and I want to be let go. And then they come back with their tail between their legs because they failed. What kind of people throws parties for that person? Who are we? How do we reach that? And I think we reach it through loving others by learning patience by learning that jealousy and envy and things like these are just emotions they're just the feelings that do not define us they might want to define us but we can learn ways to let them go and allow love and compassion to take over learning slowly to be the prodigal's parent who says I want both my my children it's a tough game grace acceptance is, is, is hard and requires a lot and it doesn't happen overnight but as we've talked about the fruits of the spirit over the past few months and, and talked about love and patience, patience and kindness 
I thought it was important for us to look at envy and look at jealousy and look at a case that when it would even seem justified, that's why I thought the prodigal's story was good because the older brother seems justified in this case. And, and challenge ourselves to go beyond that. To really be peacemakers. To really be grace makers and forgivers of those who offend us and not be easily offended. And not being quick to judge, but quick to love, quick to forgive, quick to show grace. Other people might not agree with us. Other people might call us schmucks. Other people might think we're naive. But in some ways, it's not our business what other people think of us. It's what we're called to do, is to love one another, to restore one another. And to be that presence that says, come in, the presence that leaves the 99, the presence that sees, you know, looks for the lost coin, seeks it out. The presence that rejoices over the son's return, but also still rejoices over the son who stayed. I hope we can all learn to find that. And I hope that if jealousy or envy is in your life, or, you know, I know I struggle with it in areas in my own life, that we all learn to let it go and move forward with our lives and allow, allow it to be in the past. Because that's it's usually what it is. It's stuff that just needs to lay in the past, let it go, recognize it, like I said, on a cloud, and let it float by. <laughs> you know, it's on the river, let it ride by. And let's celebrate. Let's celebrate the success of those who've come home. Let's celebrate the success of those who are our friends. So, Good luck with that. It's a tough one. And I'm going to continue to work on it myself. But uh, grace certainly is a strange thing, isn't it? It can seem unfair. I'm going to pray. Lord, I thank you for your grace and your mercy. I don't always understand it, but I ask for it in abundance. I ask that you help each one of us to find it in our hearts to love others to see past their mistakes or successes whatever may get in our way may whatever may be the stumbling block your will amen thanks everyone for listening this is revolution church